pursued a new policy. When she came in, she took import duty off so that imports could come in without any duty on, encouraged the imports and put the VAT up, which squeezed the retailer to wanting to look further afield. Britain's textile houses had once been powerful economic players. But now the market was flooded with cheap foreign imports, retailers held the trump cards. They could afford to cut prices and take a higher profit margin at the same time. When I started, the retailers were working on just doubling up, so if I sold something at £9, it would be £19.99. Now something at £9 from China might be £130, and they've just taken the view of you know, buying ever cheaper and selling ever dearer. Manchester's coke makers simply couldn't compete in the new containerized world. Some relocated to Asia, taking their skills and machines with them. Others simply went out of business. We've probably got just less than 70 people now, and I think we're the very last in the area doing what we do. And I think we've survived on a little bit of determination and a little bit of luck over the, uh, over the years. You know, to keep going continuously has been very difficult. Many British car, motorbike and electrical manufacturers have suffered similar fates. With fewer goods going out than ever before, the shipping container has contributed to Britain's biggest industrial trade deficit since records began. The UK now has an import-led economy. Virtually all of the containers that we're discharging that are coming into the country are coming in fully laden with goods. Of those going out, something like a half are going out empty. Our, our biggest export through here is, is fresh air. Through four decades of containerization, Britain changed from a nation of manufacturers to a nation of office workers. Today, our modern service economy is headquartered on the site of London's once famous docks. This redevelopment swept away years of decay and helped London become one of the world's financial centers, creating tens of thousands of new well-paid jobs. If you know where to look, you can even find a few of the old dockers among the bankers. But they're a dying breed. As progress moved on, the only thing that changed it was the, the cost of the land. So, in other words, my, my children can't, can't afford to buy it. And so when they got married, they had to move out. A lot of the people that I grew up with have either died or moved on. Their families have certainly moved on. Liverpool has clung on to its port, but it too has been changed by the container. Well, you can see it, the, the port is still busy. The port's still doing a lot of business, but it's containers now. Before, there's loads of character, loads of people, and you just don't see them anymore. It's like a ghost road compared to how it was. The changes have left visible scars on Liverpool's dock road. Over here is the uh, sand and lion, and um, at this time of the day, it would be heaving. You know, it used to do really good business. Well, I hope you don't fancy a cup of tea. I think this cafe is closed as well. Few here celebrate the invention of the shipping container. I know you can't stop progress, but it depends on your perception of progress from a capitalist point of view, containerization, because he can make more money. There's progress but to the working class where you lose your job, your livelihood, and not much prospects of anything else. It isn't progress, is it? You've taken a backward step. But not all on the Mersey believe that the metal boxes have wrecked the area. 
when you're in the port of Liverpool in the 80s, you couldn't see the future as being as bright as what it was maybe in the 1960s. But in time, those areas that were previously handling general cargo, that at one point became redundant because the cargo had moved into containers and moved to the south, have actually now turned into other berths handling other cargoes that have actually given the port of Liverpool an even brighter future. I've got to admit, it's got to be a good invention, hasn't it? It's done away with a lot of work, but they're carrying more cargo, aren't they, than what we're, um, when they had the general cargo. After years of decline, Liverpool's port is growing again. Its owners are investing in a new container terminal that they hope will win back business from the world's biggest shipping lines. We have the permission to do it. The business case is now being drawn up for it. And I would hope that within the next three or four years, we'll actually see the terminal in operation so that we can see ships coming in from China and the Far East now coming back to their traditional port, Liverpool. The port of Felixstowe is investing too, so it can handle more of the world's biggest ships. Both at Felixstowe and in the UK as a whole, we only have a limited number of berths that can accommodate these bigger ships. As more and more of these ships come on stream, we're going to need bigger facilities to ensure that the UK retains its status as a mainline call for the big intercontinental container ships. Last year, the global recession caused the first fall in world trade since the invention of the shipping container. But the box is weathering the storm. Once again, trade routes are beginning to thrive and the containers are moving, supplying the lifeblood of our modern economy. There are millions and millions of containers out there traveling around the world. Nobody even knows the exact number, there are so many of them. 